In this video, we'll walk through the basics of Amplitude's event segmentation chart. First, we'll go over what you can do with an event segmentation chart and why it's useful. Then we'll walk through setting up and interpreting an event segmentation chart. Finally, we'll end by covering the group by functionality. Event segmentation is a core Amplitude chart that you can use to start understanding user behavior in your product. You can use this chart to show you what different groups of users are doing in your product within a specific time frame. As you will see later in this video, event segmentation can help you answer a number of different questions depending on how you choose to measure or visualize your data. These questions are often related to quantifying a certain type of behavior. In fact, many people start their analyses with event segmentation because they're interested in counting something. These initial metrics give them input for building other amplitude charts. Examples of questions that event segmentation can help you answer are, how many users access my online store on a mobile device? Do users in some countries add emojis to their messages more frequently than others? How many times on average did users stream an artist's song on their release day? For this video, let's say I'm a product manager at a music streaming service called Amplitunes. I'm interested in investigating how Amplitunes users are using the community feature I launched last quarter and have a couple of metrics I'm reporting on. Here's how I would begin my analysis using Amplitude. Click plus new to create a new event segmentation chart. Here you can see the three parts of the chart builder that are present in almost every single one of Amplitude's charts. The events module, the segmentation module, and the metrics module. The events module is where you choose the events you want in your analysis. Clicking the dropdown will first show you suggested events which are surfaced by Amplitude based on what you and others have used in other charts. In addition to your custom events, Amplitude surfaces some events by default based on your instrumentation. These events are preceded by the Amplitude logo. The segmentation module is where you can create or select segments of users to focus your analysis on. By default, Amplitude will query over all of your users, but you can also quickly switch to active users or new users. For more information on what we mean by active and new, check out our Help Center. The Metrics module is where you can choose what metrics you want displayed on your chart. We'll go over each of these options in a moment. In my case, I have two events that are related to the community feature that I'm interested in, Join Community and Post Community Content. I'm going to select both of these in the Event Segmentation dropdown to look at. Now I'll dive into a series of product usage questions I have about these events. The first metric I want to investigate is the number of weekly active users who did each of these events. In the segmentation module, I'll switch from any user to active users. We don't need to add any other filters to this segment at this moment. To learn more about adding filters and applying cohorts to your analysis, be sure to watch our video on cohorts. By default, the metrics module is set to uniques. This shows you the total count of unique users in your segment who triggered the events you chose in the events module on the y-axis of your chart. Choosing a different option in the metrics module will change the metric you're analyzing and thus change the y-axis. We'll get to the other options in this module in a little bit. Finally, I want to visualize my data on a weekly basis over the last quarter so I'll choose weekly over the last 12 weeks. This information makes up my x-axis. This chart now shows us the number of unique active users each week who triggered post community content in blue and join community in green over the last 12 weeks. On the side, Amplitude surfaces a few chart takeaways. Last complete value shows us the number of users who triggered each event last week compared to the first week in our 12-week range. Average value is the average number of unique users per week over the last 12 weeks. Total value is the aggregate number of unique users over the last 12 weeks. If you'd rather visualize this data as an aggregate number of unique users who triggered each event over the last 12 weeks, you can switch to a bar chart visualization. 
This shows you the same data as the total value takeaway in the line chart visualization. Now what if I want to know what proportion of my total users are active in the community? If I select active percent in the metrics module, I can see the percentage of all active users in my 12 week period who triggered the two events I'm interested in. An average of 46% of my active users joined a community in the last 12 weeks and 43.8% of my active users posted community content in the last 12 weeks. Instead of counting unique users, you might want to count of the number of times an event was triggered to see how one type of product behavior is more or less common than another. To do this, we can switch to event totals in the metrics module. This shows you the total number of times our community events were triggered on a weekly basis. Just like before, the same takeaway metrics are on the right side of the chart. I'll switch my visualization to the bar chart again to see my chart as an aggregate over the 12 week period. Based on this chart, the join community event was triggered more than the post community content event in the last 12 weeks. In my scenario, I'm not worried about the total number of times an event is firing as much as I care about how many times a single user triggers an event on average. This is easily uncovered if you switch to average in the metrics module. Using the line graph and the takeaway metrics on the right, I can see that a single user triggers join a community and post community content events on average two times a week. Now we know the average number of times these events are triggered per user. Let's say I want to focus specifically on the posting community content event because these users tend to be highly engaged in Amplitunes. I can see the number of times a user triggers the post community content event by choosing frequency in the metrics module. In the line graph visualization, each curve represents a certain number of times the event was performed and each data point tells you how many unique users triggered the event that many times during that week. So here, 46,423 unique users posted community content one time during the week of September 27th. The properties and formula options of the metrics module allow you to customize your analysis and investigate even more complex metrics. The properties option in the metrics module will generate an event segmentation chart based on the numerical values of your event and user properties. The formula tab is a powerful way to visualize custom calculations of your data on an event segmentation chart. We'll cover these options in more detail in another video. So far, I've focused on a couple of events and specific properties of those events. But what if I want to get a broader picture of my events? The group by functionality is one way to do that. While the where clause lets you get specific with an event or user property you want to analyze, group by lets you zoom out by bucketing events by their property values. In the events module, you can use the group by option to categorize your events by user or event property value. For example, the post community content event has a content type event property. If I choose to group by content type, I can see how many unique users triggered each content type value. In this case, a new comment, a reply, a favorite, or a photo. Group by analyses are best viewed using the bar chart or horizontal bar chart visualization. Here, I can see that most of the community content posts were new comments and replies. You may notice that there's a group by functionality in the segmentation module as well. This is useful when you want to group your user segments by user property values. It is also possible to include multiple group by conditions in your analyses, but we'll cover that in another video. Here's a recap of what we covered in this video. First, we went over what you can do with an event segmentation chart and why it's useful. Then we walked through setting up and interpreting an event segmentation chart. Finally, we ended by covering the group by functionality. For even more information on the event segmentation chart, check out our Help Center and community.